View 3.3 is out with some really cool features. Now I'm excited about this release because it's been a long time coming. Now View 3.3, I've done several videos on some of the features and it's really cool, especially for TypeScript users. So I'm gonna show you some examples of how you can use the 3.3 features today, some experimental ones and how to get set up. Hey, and if you like these videos, make sure you click that like button and share this with your friends. So here is the blog announcement from Evan Yu that was just released on May 11th. Now they're calling this release the Veroni Kenshin release. So as you may know, many of the releases for the Vue ecosystem has this anime theme and this is the Veroni Kenshin release. Most of the important improvements with this release all have something to do with TypeScript. So I went ahead and created this application using the latest version of Vue.3.3. And the first one I wanna show is this generic components. So uh, if I look inside this file here, what you can do now is you can see here with script setup, lang equals ts generic t. So you can, in fact, use generics inside your view applications when you set it up using script setup. Now I went ahead and did something also new is now you can import types in from different files and then have them inside your defined props, uh, your defined emits, things like that. So let's take a look at this generic props comp. So what this does is it takes a type T and then it, you can have an items, which is an array of type T and also uh, the selected is type T. And then what I do with it is I use a V4 to loop through the items. And then I see if the, the item is selected, then I just have this inline style here where I make the font larger and I make it purple. And then if it's not one of the selected items, it just shows the item. So you can see here, I'm passing in an array of strings, and then I have the selected C here. So if you look at it here, it's not too exciting. Uh, in my app here, I just see generic and import types. I see ABC and the C is the selected one and it's purple. But what's nice about this is if you're using the latest version of, of Vue 3.3 and Volar, uh, you should get type restriction here. So if I put in, instead of a letter here, I I put in a number, put my cursor over here. You can see the type number is not assigned to type string. And so the way the generic works, it knows that these are all strings and therefore your selected can't be a string. So this is really handy to create powerful generic components like this. So I put it back to an A, it works. Now I can also do the opposite. Let's say I wanted to make this a array of numbers. You can see right now, now it says selected string is not assignable to type number and I can change this to five. So I get all my type safety, which is not one of the selected ones. So if I put two and I save it, you can see two is being highlighted here. And so it's really nice to have this type of type, type safety. It's really nice to be able to import these types in and it works uh, great. One other thing to keep in mind is Volar used to be the name of the, of the extension that you'd want to install. It's been renamed to view language features Volar. And I, I've been playing around with this. I've been playing with the pre-release version. So if you have any issues, you may want to switch to the pre-release version as well. The next thing I wanna show you guys is something called define model. This is another new features. So first to get this feature working, since it is one of those experimental ones, you have to go into your V config and you have to add the script tag and then set the define model to true. And there's another one we'll show later called props to structure. And you need to make sure you set this to true as well. So the define model, that doesn't show much here, but the way it works is if I look inside this app view, I have this V model. And remember, V models is a way you can do two-way data binding between a, either an input or in, if in this case, passing it into a component. So this state is a ref that has count zero. I'm also displaying it here and I'm passing it down to this divine comp model. So if I look at this one, instead of having to do a full update model and then emit the value back, it's just really simple. You can take the define model here and then I can either inside the script or inside the template, I can increment it directly on the, on the value. So if you remember in the past, you couldn't, you couldn't directly take props and mutate them. But in this case, since we this new define model makes this possible, and this cleans up so much code, it makes so many things easier. If you're interested, I did a whole video on this when it was still in beta, uh, so you can check that out here as well. 
Next thing I want to show you is the props destructuring. So here in my example, I have this prop here. I have this value. If you come here, it says new. Well, I'll refresh it here. It says hi there. So I'm passing in uh, hi there is this ref into this message, into uh, this message here, to the props destructure. And then when I'm clicking, it's changing it. So what I'm doing here, and the big thing here, is that you can now destructure your values outside of define props. And if you've been around Vue for a while, you know that in the past, this was always a bad thing to do because if you did any sort of destruction with define props, you lose reactivity. But what's nice about this, you don't lose reactivity. You can also assign the values directly in. The watch effect works. So if I look inside the console here and go to console and I click this button, you can see message is new. So it's working, the reactivity is working and it's just much easier. If you're coming from React to, you'll love this feature because this is typically how uh, everything's done in React, everything's destructured with your props and this just makes a lot of sense. So this is really neat. And once again, remember you have to go, since this is an experimental feature, you have to go into your Vite config and add props to structure true. Otherwise you'll get an error in the console that it doesn't understand what you're doing. The last feature I wanna show you is set slots, uh, is this new slot way to define your slots. Slots are a way that you can have things show up between the closing, opening and closing brackets of your component. In this case, this is a scope slot. I'm pulling this a message from the child component back into the parent component and it just shows the message right here. But if I look inside this set slots, I have this new define slots available here, which is neat. So now I'm telling it that there is a default slot in here and that it does have a prop called message, which is type string and it's returning a string. If I don't have this message here on this slot, you can see this slot here, it gives you a message that you're missing type string on it. So then you can add in the, the uh, string here and put a, a value that you're passing back. So that's really interesting. Now it does have a few limitations as of this recording. If I, let's say I set here this to return type string and I come back here and I get rid of this scope slot and I don't know, I would have, it returns it like a different type here, like a number or something like that. Uh, let's see here, if I put in const num equals five, and then inside here I put five, or in this case num, you can see here there's no squiggly line, so it does have some return problems. Vola, Volar or view language services don't recognize the return type here, so I'm not getting any type scripting telling me that I have the wrong type in here. So it has a, a little ways to go, but it's still a pretty neat feature and something I'd be using as I start uh, updating my components to add slots. I would add these defined slots in there. Now there's a few things that I missed that I didn't talk about. Uh, one is define emits. I'm not sure this is a big deal, but you can change the call signature of your define emits. You can see here it says const emits define emits. And I kind of like this one, but you can add it in as like an, uh, uh, like an array almost, and you can uh, assign it like that. There's also a define options. So if you've ever had to do this, there's a weird issue where you had to create like a separate script block just for define, uh, for in ad inherit adders false. Now you no longer need to do that. You can just use define options, which is uh, nice. And then there's just a few smaller things for better support for two ref and two value. I haven't really seen too many issues with this, but it just uh, works a little, little bit. It has a, a few more features. And then it has some improved JSX import support, support as well. So if these features are awesome. I really, really enjoy them. I think it's something that you should be using in your apps today. I have a whole video on some of the features I've been using with the Vue macros. Check this out next.